The story of St. Patrick is based on both fact and fiction. Over the years, they have morphed into what is known as the legend of St. Patrick. He was born in Britain around 386 AD and grew up as the child of an elite Roman family. When he was 16 years old, his family estate was raided by pirates and he was kidnapped and taken to Ireland. There he was sold as a slave and made a herdsman working for Milchu, a famous Durid priest. Patrick came to view his enslavement as God's test of his faith. During his six years of captivity, he became deeply devoted to Christianity through constant prayer. In a vision, he saw the children of pagan Ireland reaching out their hands to him and grew increasingly determined to convert the Irish to Christianity. Patrick had many dreams, one of which told him that a ship was waiting for him to help him escape. He did in fact escape and return to his family in Britain. Soon after, he went to France, entered a monastery and studied under the guidance of Saint Germanus of Auxerre. He was ordained a bishop by Pope Celestine in 432 AD. He then returned to Ireland and began converting the natives to Christianity. This is a task that occupied his time for the rest of his life. There are many stories of how Patrick did this. Most are related in the allegorical style. Like so many of the stories of Irish history, they are steeped in legend and you either accept them as truth or discard them as children's stories. But a word of caution to any naysayers who might read this. Tales passed down from generation to generation most always are based on something that actually happened. They are framed in their current words to indicate a higher meaning. For example, did St. Patrick actually cast the snakes out of Ireland, or were they symbolic of the devil and the pagan religions that were being practiced at the time? My version of this piece, St. Patrick's Breastplate, is based on old Irish lyrics traditionally attributed to St. Patrick and his Irish ministry in the 5th century. It has been written as a recitif, music to accompany words as they are being spoken. Also known as the Deer's Cry, it is thought to be authentic. It is said to have turned St. Patrick and his followers into deer when they were being pursued by King Lagerer's men early one morning, hence the title, The Deer's Cry. However, it is also called the Lorica of St. Patrick, a Lorica being a type of prayer of protection, literally meaning breastplate. Since then, it has always been used not only as a morning prayer, but a prayer of protection. It is written in the style of Druidic incantation for protection on a journey. It is part of the Liber Hymnorium, a collection of hymns found in two manuscripts kept in Dublin. The words were translated into English verse by Cecil Francis Alexander in 1889 and to two traditional Irish tunes. One night, during the time I was writing the music for St. Patrick's Breastplate, I had a dream. I was transported back to the time of Patrick and began to feel the many torments and anxieties that he must have felt. The aloneness of his life in this hostile land. His task to convert the people to religious beliefs contrary to their own. The constant attacks of the evil one who was determined not to let him succeed. All these things weighed heavily on his shoulders. Yet through it all, he stayed true to his faith and the belief that he was doing the will of God. Then suddenly, I heard the sound of horns, first coming faintly from the north, then the south, then from the east, and finally the thunder came from out of the west. Then I heard the sound of drums growing louder and stronger as if they were the boots of men marching, coming together from all directions. They came to a vast open field, and there on a hill stood St. Patrick. On another part of the field stood the evil one with all his minions, taunting and harassing Patrick and his followers. Then Patrick raised his mitre and pointed in the direction of Satan, and the horns from all four sides of the field came forth with a mighty blast that shook the earth. 
The forces of good attacked the forces of evil, and the battle ensued. It raged for hours, and finally the evil one and his followers retreated, leaving Patrick and his forces triumphant. The day had been won, but the cost was dear. Many good men had given their lives for the faith. But in every one of those who had fallen, ten would rise to take their places. This is the picture I hope you will see when you listen to the music. I, who am short of temper and weak of will, take great comfort in the knowledge that Patrick, like many other saints before and since, have suffered mightily against the temptations of the flesh and the evil one. Armed with this knowledge, I know that I am not alone in my struggle, and with the help of the Lord and the example of these holy men and women to guide me, I will emerge triumphant in the end. I arise today through the mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through the belief in the threeness, through the confession of the oneness of the Creator of creation. today through the strength of Christ's birth with his baptism, through the strength of his crucifixion with his burial, through the strength of his resurrection with his ascension, through the strength of his descent for the judgment of doom. I arise today through the strength of the love of cherubim, in obedience of angels, in the service of archangels, in the hope of resurrection to meet with reward, in prayer of patriarchs, in prediction of prophets, in preaching of apostles, in faith of confessors, in innocence of holy virgins, in deeds of righteous men. I arise today through the strength of heaven, light of sun, radiance of moon, splendor of fire, speed of lightning, swiftness of wind, depth of sea, stability of earth, firmness of rock. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak to me, God's hand to guard me, God's way to lie before me, God's shield to protect me, God's host to save me from the snares of devils, from the temptation of vices, from everyone who shall wish me ill, afar and near, alone and in multitude.
I summon today all these powers between me and those evils, against every cruel, merciless power that may oppose my body and soul, against incantations of false prophets, against black laws of paganism, against false laws of heretics, against idolatry, against spells of witches and smiths and wizards, against every knowledge that corrupts man, body and soul. Christ to shield me today against poison, against burning, against drowning, against wounding, so that there may come to me an abundance of reward. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me. Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me. Christ on my right, Christ on my left. Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise. Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me. Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me. Christ in every eye that sees me. Christ in every ear that hears me. today through a mighty strength the invocation of the Trinity through the belief in the threeness through the confession of the oneness of the creator of creation 